हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वी वॉन्ट टू कम्प्यूट प्रोबेबिलिटीज ऑफ वेरियस इवेंट्स इन आर लाइफ फॉर एग्जाम्पल हाउ हाउ मच चांसेस आर देर दैट देर इज गोइंग टू बी रेन और समथिंग लाइक दैट सो फॉर डूइंग दैट वी नीड टू स्टडी सम मैथमेटिकल बेसिस और मैथमेटिकल फाउंडेशन ऑफ प्रायोरिटी थियरी नाउ इवेंट्स आर ऑफ वेरियस टाइप्स सो देर आर वेरियस लॉज विच गवर्न सच इवेंट्स so they are known as probability distributions so today in this lecture we are going to study some common probability distributions and what are the things that can be computed using these probability distributions so here is a brief outline about the lectures firstly we'll study what is known by moments moments are basically fixed quantities related to the probability distribution through moments we get some information about that distribution then we'll go to some standard discrete distributions discrete distributions are the ones which can be used for modeling integer valued data wherever we have count data for modeling that count type of things we can use various probability laws they are called as discrete distribution we'll study three major discrete distributions and then we'll have a list of others but then every data set need not be a count or integer data there are some data sets which can have values in points for example heights of individuals they need not be integers so for them we have what is known as continuous distributions so there are various continuous distributions so we'll study three standard continuous distributions and then we'll again have a look at other few so suppose we have this data given to us so this is data related to some garden most of the trees in this garden have fruits in the range 0 to 5 so maximum number of fruits on a given tree is 5 now we have computed number of trees having the corresponding number of fruits so here corresponding to 5 we have number of trees as 10 means out of all the trees in this garden 10 trees have 5 fruits each 25 trees have 4 fruits each then there are 20 trees which have 3 fruits each and so on so using this information we can compute what is known as probability mass function now basically probability mass function is probability allotted to individual points so here my variable of interest is the number of fruits x so the possible values of this variable x are 0 1 2 up to 5 and then we compute probability of each of these values using the number of trees given here if you uh, take the sum of the second column it is 100 means the total number of trees in this garden is 100 so if i want to compute the chances that the tree has five fruits then my formula would be number of trees having five fruits upon total number of trees that is 100 and this is nothing but probability of x equal to 5 so it is 0.1 so in this way we can compute probability of every single point so the last column here is known as probability mass function of the random variable x so from this we can see that corresponding to x equal to 4 we have highest value in the last column so it means that a tree is most likely to have four fruits and that value is 0.25 so out of the given 100 trees 25 trees have four fruits means in general given a tree there are 25% chances that it would have four fruits 10% chances that it would have five fruits 2% chances that it would have three fruits and so on then using this data we need to compute some summary measures which can summarize this entire table through one or two numbers first summary measure is known as expectation now expectation is basically 
द मीन ऑफ द एंटायर पॉप्युलेशन सो इट इज द मीन वैल्यू ऑफ माय एंटायर पॉप्युलेशन एंड सो एक्सपेक्टेशन कैन बी कंप्यूटेड बाय यूजिंग दिस फॉर्मूला दैट इट इज सम ओवर एक्स इन टू करस्पॉन्डिंग प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स सो इफ आई वॉन्ट टू कंप्यूट एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ दिस डेटा आई वुड हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई फर्स्ट कॉलम एंड थर्ड कॉलम एंड देन टेक सम ऑफ दैट मल्टीप्लीकेशन कॉलम सो दिस एक्सपेक्टेशन इज डिनोटेड बाय म्यू एक्स सो एज यू कैन सी हियर वी हैव कंप्यूटेड इट फॉर दिस डेटा सो फाइव इंटू पॉइंट वन प्लस फोर इंटू पॉइंट टू फाइव एंड सो ऑन द फाइनल आंसर टर्न्स आउट टू बी टू पॉइंट सिक्स यू कैन सी हियर टू पॉइंट सिक्स इज अ काइंड ऑफ एवरेज फॉर दिस पॉपुलेशन सो इफ दिस गार्डन इज माई पॉपुलेशन देन एवरेज नंबर ऑफ फ्रूट्स पर ट्री इज टू पॉइंट सिक्स दिस इज हाउ वी इंटरप्रीट द एक्सपेक्टेशन सो एक्सपेक्टेशन इज वन सिंगल क्वांटिटी विच कैन बी यूज एज अ टिपिकल मेजर ऑफ दैट पॉपुलेशन एंड देन एक्सपेक्टेशन हैज वेरी गुड मैथमेटिकल प्रॉपर्टीज वन इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉपर्टी इज लीनियरिटी ऑफ द एक्सपेक्टेशन सो इट मीन्स दैट एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ ए एक्स प्लस बी वाई इज ए टाइम्स एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ एक्स प्लस बी टाइम्स एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ वाई इट मीन्स दैट इफ वी नो एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल टर्म्स एक्स एंड वाई देन वी कैन कंप्यूट एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ देयर लीनियर कॉम्बिनेशन यूजिंग दिस फॉर्मूला सो दिस इज अ वेरी यूजफुल प्रॉपर्टी बिकॉज इट हेल्प्स अस टू गेट एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ वेरियस डिफिकल्ट क्वांटिटीज ऑल्सो बट देन एवरीथिंग ऑफ दिस टाइप होल्ड्स इफ माई डेटा इज काउंट डेटा एंड एज वी डिस्कस्ड अर्लियर देर इज समथिंग नोन एज कंटिन्यूस डेटा सो इफ सपोज इंस्टेड ऑफ नंबर ऑफ फ्रूट्स आई एम मेजरिंग हाइट ऑफ ट्रीज देन my numbers would be in points so there will be infinitely many possible values one tree may have height say uh, 5 feet another tree may have say 6.1 feet and so on so number of values that a height can take is infinite and that is basically uncountably infinite so i cannot have summation so that summation is simply replaced by integration as we know summation is a gen- uh, integration is a generalization of summation so expectation of x in the continuous case would be integral over minus infinity to infinity x into fx dx now what is this fx this fx is a generalization of probability mass function to the continuous case we saw this probability mass function in the earlier slide this is last column is my probability mass function it is basically probability of individual value but then again in continuous case because we have infinitely many values we cannot have probability mass for each point instead we have something known as probability density so this fx is that probability density function and because it is a counterpart of mass function it takes the role of mass function so instead of the formula for discrete we are just replacing probability x equal to x by fx dx and we are taking integral so my mu x or the expectation of the population mean of the population is given by integral over x fx dx now but then it may not be sufficient to know what is the mean value of the population another thing that is of interest is the spread of the population how much is my population is spread for example here we know that mean was 2.6 but then this 2.6 doesn't give me any idea about how far can i go from 2.6 what is the maximum number of fruits or what is the minimum number of fruits so we need some kind of measure for that and one such measure for determining spread is known as variance so variance of x can be computed by using this formula variance of x is basically expectation of x minus expected x whole square now what do i mean by this just look at the expression inside the square bracket what i have is x minus expected x whole square means basically we are taking deviation from the mean and then square of that deviation 
so we are going to see how far away we are from the mean and then we don't want to go in the absolute sense because then left and right side things would cancel out and we would get a false picture that there is no deviation so we are taking square and finally we want mean of this thing so we are taking expectation of square deviations from the mean this formula can further be simplified and then it looks like expectation of x square minus expected x whole square now here the second term expected x whole square we already know because we have computed expected x we just have to take its square whereas first term is expectation of x square now how do we compute expectation of this x square so for that we know formula for expectation of x what we have to do is simply replace x by x square so my formula for expectation of x square would be sum over x square into same thing priority x equal to x or in case of continuous case it would be integral over x square into fx dx so this would give us expectation of x square and using that we can compute variance now uh, one important property of variance is that variance is always non negative now it's evident from the definition because we have square term in the definition and we know squares are always non negative so variance is always non negative here let's compute variance for this given data set so we know we first need to compute expectation of x square so we have to take square of the first column and multiply it by the corresponding entry in the last column so it is 5 square into 0.1 plus 4 square into 0.25 and so on this quantity this entire sum turns out to be 9.1 so expectation of x square is 9.1 and then we have already computed expectation of x here which is 2.6 so using these two quantities we get variance of x as 9.1 minus 2.6 square that is 2.34 so now we have got a rough idea about the spread of this data set but then there is something more important i may be interested in more than one variable for example i am interested in height and weight of individuals now i know that height and weight have some relationship so how to exploit that kind of relationship if i already know that two variables are related to each other they depend on each other then i need to have something which can measure this dependence so for that we have third type of moment this mean was first moment variance was another moment and then we have another moment here which is known as covariance covariance is basically the measure of how two variables move relative to each other so covariance is computed between two variables so the formula is covariance of x y is expectation of x minus expected x into y minus expected y now if we see this bracket square bracket then we have x minus expected x into y minus expected y means we are taking deviation of x from its mean and deviation of y from its mean and then we are taking product of this now this quantity can either be positive or negative or zero so there are no restrictions now when will this be positive if in most of the cases this product inside the expectation is positive then the quantity is positive now when would the product be positive if the product of two terms is positive then it means that both the terms are either negative or both of them are positive means they have same sign so if both the terms x minus expected x and y minus expected y have same sign then what does it mean that if x is greater than expected x then corresponding y is greater than expected y means if above average value of x is considered then corresponding value of y is also above average 
and exactly reverse way if i have some value of x which is below its average then corresponding value of y is more likely to be below average so kind of smaller values of x have correspondingly smaller values of y and larger values of x have larger values of y so if such pairs are large in number then in that case my final quantity would be positive and therefore covariance would be positive this means that my two variables x and y move together and now when the covariance will be negative if the reverse is the case means if smaller values of x are associated with larger values of y or smaller values of y are associated with larger values of x then in such situations my covariance is going to be negative now here is a simplified formula for covariance it can be written as expectation of xy minus expected x into expected y now how do i compute expectation of xy pair so expectation of xy product can also be obtained using this similar formula for expectation what we have to do is instead of x we have to write x into y we have to write corresponding probability x equal to x comma y equal to y means we have to write the joint probability of x taking value x and y taking value small y and then sum would be over two things all possible values of x and all possible values of y so this gives me covariance now we saw that range of covariance is minus infinity to plus infinity it can be either negative positive or zero but then we need some kind of scaling so that these things become comparable because what happens is if my spread of x or spread of y is very large then due to that my covariance may become large so to avoid such effect of uh, individual spreads what we do is we compute a scaled version which is known as correlation now what is correlation correlation is covariance of xy upon square root of variance x into square root of variance y so this is basically a scaling of covariance thing and therefore range of correlation is between minus 1 to plus 1 but then interpretation is almost similar to covariance if the correlation is negative then it means that x and y don't move together means smaller values of x would tend to have correspondingly larger values of y and vice versa whereas if correlation is positive then x y move together and correlation equal to plus 1 would mean perfect positive relationship whereas correlation equal to minus 1 would mean perfectly negative relationship and correlation equal to 0 would mean that there is no relation no linear relationship between the two variables so correlation equal to 0 would mean that knowing x i cannot say anything about y with certainty whatever i know other than that is okay but i cannot change my opinion on the no on the basis of knowledge that i have about x now we had seen uh, formula for expectation of linear combination so do we have something like that for variance also because if i am interested in linear combination of two variables then obviously i would need its expectation as well as variance so variance of ax plus by is a slightly difficult compared to expectation of ax plus by so it is a square variance of x plus b square variance of y plus 2ab times covariance of xy now this can be remembered through x plus y whole square type of formula there also we have x square plus y square plus 2xy so this is kind of similar to that so we have square of first term so a square variance of x plus b square variance of y plus product term so 2ab and product of variance equivalent is covariance of xy so if we know covariance between two variables if we know their individual variances then using these three quantities we can compute um, variance of the linear combination now we can do this business for example for this type of data we have x here y here and their corresponding probabilities so we can compute expectation x 
variance x, expectation y, variance y, and so on. Now, um, as we know, we have to model various data sets using some underlying laws. So, the most, uh, let's first go for discrete distributions. What do I mean by discrete distribution? Discrete distributions are the ones which take either finite or countably many values only. Means they can be say either integer valued or they can have say only finite values say 1, 2 and 3 and so on. So whenever we have integer type of data or count data, for example number of mistakes in a page of a book, something like that. So in such situations we can use discrete distribution to compute probabilities of related events. The most basic discrete distribution is Bernoulli distribution. Now what is a Bernoulli distribution? This distribution can be used if my variable takes only two values 0 and 1. Now is there any variable which takes only two values? For example let's say again let's go to the rain case. Either it will rain today or there will be no rain. So I can say that rain event of rain is denoted by 1, event of no rain is denoted by 0. So there are only two possible values, either rain or no rain. So for such thing, we have Bernoulli distribution. So Bernoulli distribution has only two possible values, the value 1 with probability p and obviously for value 0, probability would be 1 minus p because the total probability has to be 1. And this p thing is known as success probability. This is a parameter of this distribution. Parameter means this is a quantity by which you can um, determine properties of this distribution. So this p is known as success probability. And we can compute expectation and variance for a Bernoulli random variable x. So it turns out that expectation is p. Because we know the formula, it is x into corresponding probability. So here it would be 1 into p plus 0 into 1 minus p. So it would be simply p. Then we can compute variance using the formula expectation of x square minus expected x whole square. Now expectation of x square would again be 1 square into p plus 0 square into 1 minus p. So it would be simply p we have to subtract expected x whole square. So p minus p square, it would be p into 1 minus p. So expectation of a Bernoulli random variable is p and its variance is p into 1 minus p if the parameter is p. Here is one example of that. If tossing a coin, if we denote head by 1 and tail by 0 or if we define x as a number of heads in a coin toss, then if I get head, my x would be 1. If I get tail, my x would be 0. And if my coin is unbiased, then my probability of head is same as probability of tail. So my success probability p would be half. So this is what is known as Bernoulli distribution. Here is a histogram of uh, 1000 coin tosses. So you can see from here that we have got tail 486 of the times and we have got head 514 times. Now this is not exactly 0.5. Though we know that probability of head is 0.5, this thing is not exactly half half, 500, 500. Now why this is the case? Now you know probability is 0.5, but if suppose I toss a coin and if I get head, then is it guaranteed that on the next toss I would get tail? No, that is not the case. It may again be head. So even if we know that things are half half, out of the two tosses, we may get both as heads or both as tails. So these are possibilities. So similarly, out of these 1000 tosses, 486 turned out to be tail and 514 turned out to be heads. So they are near to 0.5, but it is not exactly 0.5. And as we increase the number of tosses, it's more likely to go closer to 0.5. So if suppose instead of 1000, I would have said 10,000 tosses, then these bars would be more closer to each other in heights. 
Now next uh, distribution that we would like to study is binomial. Now we saw Bernoulli but then its limitation is it has only two possible values 0 or 1. But then everything in this universe cannot be categorized into 0 and business. We need to have something more than that. So we have a binomial distribution. Now how do we define binomial distribution? What we are basically doing is we are classifying n objects into two classes. For example, suppose I have a class of say 25 students. Then I can make two classes, girls and boys. So how many are girls? How many are boys? So there are two classes. So that 25 number can be split into two numbers. So for such situations, binomial is useful. So binomial is a generalization of Bernoulli. In Bernoulli, we had only two possible values. Here, we would repeat that business n times. So we would have n trials and each of the trial would have two possible values. Success probability is again p as in case of Bernoulli. And then finally, we would take some of these n trials. So if I take some of these n trials, then whatever I get, that quantity would be a binomial random variable. So because of that, expectation of x would be p plus p plus p n times, so it is np and variance of x turns out to be np into 1 minus p. Now for example, here suppose x is the number of heads in 3 tosses of a coin. Now we saw it is generalization of Bernoulli. So for Bernoulli we had 1 toss of a coin, so here we have 3 tosses of a coin. So my n becomes 3 and probability of success remains same. So it is again 0 0.5. Now what are possible values of x? What are the possible values of number of heads in 3 tosses of coin? There can either be 0 heads. If suppose I get t, 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 then there will be 0 heads. There can be say 1 head. If I get say h, t, t, something like that. Or 2 or at most 3. At the most I can get h, 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 so 3 heads. So, for a Bernoulli random variable with n equal with n equal to 3 and p, possible values of 0, 1, 2, 3. So, in general, if I have a binomial np variable, its possible values are 0, 1, 2, 3 up to n. So, there are n plus 1 possible values. And the probability mass function is written by this formula. So probability that x takes particular value small x is given by n choose x p raised to x 1 minus p raised to n minus x. Now how do we get this probability? Now, out of say n trials, we got success in x trials. Probability x equal to x means out of n trials, we got success in x trials. So, we have p raised to x. Then, in the remaining n minus x trials, we got failure. So, probability of failure is 1 minus p raised to n minus x. And then we are having n choose x because these x uh, terms can be chosen out of n terms in n choose x ways. So probability that x equal to x is given by this formula. Here is a table for the same. These quantities are calculated and this is a histogram. So as you can see in the histogram, 
priority of zero heads and priority of three heads is less, whereas priority of one and two heads is almost equal to each other. Same structure can be seen in this priority mass function, which we have computed using this formula. Priority of zero and priority of three is very small, and priority of one and two is near 0.375. So you can see here. Those quantities are 388 and 366 out of 1000, so they are almost near 0.375. Now, here is an example of a situation where we can actually model things using binomial distribution. Now, this says that probability that an exposure to a nano carcinogen will be fatal is pointed. So we have to find the probability of the different events. So we have a group of fifteen workers, and probability that a given worker will die due to exposure to nano carcinogen is point eight. So we have to co compute these two probabilities: that at least nine people will die, or between four to eight people will die. Now here, if I denote my number of deaths by x, then it follows binomial distribution with n equal to fifteen. And probability of success is point eight. Here, success means death. So the chances of death are point eight, and the total number of people here is fifteen. So x is binomial fifteen comma point eight. So how do I compute probability that at least uh, at least nine people will die? So at least nine people will die means either nine people will die or ten or eleven up to fifteen. So basically, I have to add probabilities of all possible values of x starting from nine up to fifteen. So it is sum over x equal to nine to fifteen of the probability mass function which we know. Fifteen choose x, point eight raised to x, point two raised to fifteen minus x. So in this way, we can use binomial distribution to compute probabilities of some real life events. Now. Again, the problem with the binomial distribution is it has an upper bound. The values cannot go beyond n. But then there are some quantities which may not have such a bounded range. They may go up to say very high values. So for modeling such things, we have something known as Poisson distribution. This Poisson distribution is generally used for counts for count data. Uh, the parameter of this Poisson distribution is lambda, which is its mean as well as its variance. And generally, it is used to model rare events, like say number of mistakes in a printed page, or uh, number of deaths due to some rare disease, something like that. And the probability law or probability mass function for this Poisson distribution is given by this formula: probability that x equal to x. Is e raised to minus lambda lambda raised to x upon x factorial, and a major difference that we need to notice is here range of x is infinite. It starts from zero, but then you don't have any upper bound. In Bernoulli you had upper bound as one, in binomial you had upper bound as n, but here there is no upper bound. We can go up to infinity. Now this is a histogram of sample from a Poisson distribution with mean 1.5. You can see the difference. Earlier, it like as I said, it is generally used to model rare events. So the values zero, one, two, these have higher probability compared to higher, larger values. If suppose we change the parameter of the Poisson, then the structure changes. Suppose now I have taken Poisson five, so the mean number is five. So because mean is so large. I have mode also near to four or five, so it means that if I want a bit of symmetry, then the Poisson would be having higher parameter, and as we increase this parameter, the graph would change. Now here is one real life illustration where Poisson distribution can be used. So it says that the local hospital reported that number of deaths per year. Due to air pollution related diseases was 0.5. Now, what do I mean by 0.5 deaths per year? Basically, it means that 
in two years you have kind of one death so what is the probability of exactly three deaths in a given year now here because it's a rare event and it's a count data we can think of it as a poisson variable so my number of deaths follows poisson and the mean is already given to be 0.5 so probability of exactly three deaths would be probability of x equal to 3 and we have to just substitute 3 in the formula for probability mass function that we have so it would be e raised to minus 0 0.5 0 0.5 raised to 3 upon 3 factorial so this quantity would give me probability of exactly 3 deaths in a given year now these are some of the other discrete distributions that can be used first one of them is discrete uniform it is basically used in those situations where uh, probability of each value is same for example suppose I have five keys and I want to open a certain lock and I have no clue of which key opens the lock then every key is equally likely to open that lock so in, in it means that there is equal chance that I'll open the lock in say one trial or in say two trial or in three trials and so on so here the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for my number of trials before opening the lock would have uniform probabilities. So this is a situation where you can use discrete uniform distribution. One more distribution of interest is a geometric distribution. Now this geometric distribution gives you a kind of number of trials required before first success. For example, in a game of Ludo, you cannot start unless you get 6 on the die throw. So how many rounds would you need to play before you actually start and like actually enter the game? So that can be modeled using geometric distribution. A bit of generalization of geometric distribution would be a negative binomial distribution. Instead of one success, suppose you are interested in say n successes more than one success means what is the number of trials required to get say three successes in such situation you can use negative binomial distribution one more discrete distribution of interest is hypergeometric distribution now when do I use hypergeometric distribution suppose that there are um, 10 machines available to me and I have to pick up say three machines for my use and then someone comes and informs me that out of these ten machines four are defective and still without thinking suppose I randomly choose three machines then what are the chances that I would get at least one defective machine or what are the chances that I would get all the defective machines and so on so in such kind of situation you can use what is known as hypergeometric distributions so these are some of the discrete distributions there are many more which you can study now let's go to continuous distribution because we saw that sometimes we have continuous data we need to have some probability laws for studying that continuous type of data first of them is uniform distribution now what is uniform distribution as the name suggests it means that it has uniform probability over its entire range equal probability over its entire range for example, if the range is say a, b, a to b, then probability density function for the uniform a, b random variable would be given by f of x equal to 1 upon b minus a. How, how do we get this 1 upon b minus a? Because we want integral of the pdf over the entire range to be 1 because it's the total probability and we know probability, total probability of the sample space is 1. So using that, we get that PDF has to be 1 upon B minus A over the range A to B. And because there is equal probability, mean value would be exactly mid value. So my expectation is simply the middle point of the interval A to B. So it is A plus B by 2 and variance is B minus A whole square by 12. This you can compute using the formula for variance that expectation of X square minus expected X whole square. So this is the histogram of a uniform distribution. 
you can see almost all the bars have more or less equal length if we further increase our sample size they would become more equal but then things need not have to be uh, equiprobable every time we have some situations where some portion some numbers tend to have higher probabilities compared to other numbers so for modeling such things we have exponential distribution so exponential distribution the pdf is given here this theta e raised to minus theta x and the range of the variable is 0 to infinity so again we have an infinite range mean and variance of this distribution can be computed using the formula integral x f x dx and so on so mean turns out to be 1 by theta so if my parameter is theta then mean turns out to be 1 by theta and variance turns out to be 1 by theta square so this is a graph from exponential distribution as you can see initially or near 0 the probabilities are very high whereas as we go further probabilities tend to reduce so exponential distribution is generally used to model such kind of data it might be say waiting time or something like that again just like in Poisson if you change the parameter graph is going to change so this is the graph from exponential 1 but if I make my theta 5 then see this is the graph from 5 now we have to notice the x-axis here the x-axis goes from 0 to 6 means almost up to say 3 we had significantly uh, significant probabilities whereas in this graph we have significant priorities only up to say 0.8 or something this is because we have changed the parameter here the parameter was 1 means mean was also 1 whereas here parameter is 5 means mean is only 0.2 so if mean is only 0.2 then most of the values are going to be near 0.2 so I cannot go much further and that's why after 0.9 we don't get any significant priority so depending on the values in our data we need to see which parameter would be suitable for our data now next distribution is the most important continuous distribution which is normal distribution this is the most widely used distribution it's also known as Gaussian distribution it's basically a symmetric bell shaped curve and as we increase the sample size then most of the distributions tend to be similar to this normal curve and that's why this is most widely used distribution the range of this distribution is the entire real line so it can be used to model negative values as well as positive values the problem with exponential was that it could be um, uh, used only for positive values whereas here we have negative as well as positive values and that can be used for the entire real line so the PDF is given here so there are two parameters mu and sigma square mu is basically mean of this distribution and sigma square gives spread of this distribution so here is a histogram for that so as you can see the blue thing is the bell shape so more or less it is a bell shaped symmetric curve in the center we have large values whereas in the tail in both the extreme regions we have small values and it is a mesocortic curve which means it's not very high it's not very low it's in between then there are various other continuous distribution here I have listed a few gamma distribution which can be uh, thought of as a generalization of exponential distribution then beta distribution Weibull and so on so these kind of things can be used for modeling various things for example lifetimes of components or lifetimes of animals or individuals then um, incomes various things can be modeled using such distributions there are few more like t f chi square so or logistic so these things can be used for uh, sampling distributions means these things are basically used for testing purposes also so if you are interested you can study these distributions further i'll stop here thank you